It was an historic weekend in August for classic Mini followers when owners of surviving competition Minis from the 60s brought their cars back to Abingdon, spiritual home of the BMC Competitions Department. The event was Works Minis in Abingdon 2017, held at the Edward Brooks Barracks just a few minutes to the west of Abingdon. First to speak to an audience of some 100 enthusiasts was Stuart Turner, the man who led the competition department to dominate European rallying. down to me. I knew I was joining a team with great spirit, a wonderful team, and looking back on what's happened in Formula One, I'm not sure, I think the location helped. It was helpful to be away from Longbridge and all the politics and the infighting up there. It was helpful to be away from Cowley, and it was helpful to be at the MG factory, which had got a motorsport background. And in, fact, in a packed programme, one of the highlights of Saturday was an assembly of all the minis in front of the buildings that once housed the BMC competitions department. What gathering of rallying minis would not be complete without the presence of Paddy Hopkirk, who was joined by John Rhodes and Christabel Carlyle representing the ladies. Uh, you, 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 your own own no, and I didn't have this wonderful background that Paddy and John had. Um, all I did was to pass my test when I was 17, uh, was given a mini when I was 21, um, did lots of built on goodies because my friends were, were probably bought from Paddy's shop, and uh, um, was persuaded to go and watch my friends of the day at, at Grand's Hatch which I found incredibly boring, these cars going round and round in circles, smell of oil and tyres. So I said, I won't um, come and watch again unless I do it myself. So that's Paddy was later joined by Mike Wood, Paul Easter and Willie Cave, all held in order by motoring historian and presenter Graham Robson. Paddy, uh, if no one else mentions it today, I certainly will. Of course you won the Monte Carlo Rally and made you and the many and everyone world famous in 1964. But did you start that event thinking and knowing that you might just win? Were you confident when you started? No, not at all. Uh, so no. If I can just interrupt straight away, because you were faced with a, a formidable team of big Ford Falcons, weren't you? Yes, and <clears throat> Stuart in those days started different cars from different places because sometimes you had a wipeout. Uh, people from Athens one year didn't get through because of snow in Sarajevo, and he, he hedged his bets, and he said, we're thinking of going to Russia, Raymond Baxter is going to be going there, and publicity-wise could be good. And I put my hand out, up and said I'd go from there. So we did start, and never thought of winning. No, no chance whatsoever. So the whole thing was a complete surprise, which made it much more enjoyable. Also under cross-examination from Graham, were members of the team that prepared and supported those successful ventures. So Dudley, you, you explained to us the one car, one mechanic build process. About how many cars in a year would you build? In other words, if it took you six weeks for a Monte Carlo, did you then walk into, uh, into Den or, or go to Watson's office and say, uh, <clears throat> what am I doing now? What happened? What was the way, the method? Once you'd finished the car and the car had gone off onto the valley or you'd go off on the valley and come back, you would then be given another job. It could be to prepare another uh, event car, or it could be to prepare a recce car, or it could be to <coughs> prepare a car to go down to Wales testing. Did you not could have a choice? service one of the, the barges. Al Vines and his colleagues rounded off Saturday with an insight into rallying those classic cars in modern day historic events. Then, on Sunday, the minis took to the track round Abington Airfield while we cornered a few of the owners to talk with Graham Robson about their cars. I'm looking at a mini that I know very little about because hidden here under the bonnet, and Andrew Bond is going to tell us more about it, is not just an, an ordinary engine. This is one with uh, eight ports. It's an eight port engine with two big Webbers. Very exciting and very different, Andrew. Very different. It, it's state of the art for Abington, this car. Uh, they were struggling to keep up with the escorts and the Porsches, so they were looking for every last ounce of horsepower, so they were developing a cross-flow head, an eight-port head. This event was Works Minis in Abingdon 2017. Will the organiser, John McIntosh, be persuaded to reuse the title for another year? We all hope so.